Well, we got another victim of uh, Florida's weather here. Lightning strike. That's the uh, shore power reel. Took it out. What's up everybody and welcome. We're actually sitting inside of a 456 Grady Way right now. I have a Garmin, I guess this would be a GT51 transducer for the transom we got to put on. This already has a sounder module and a transom in the hull of the boat, but he wants to add this one because it has that side view, clear view, whatever, side scan, 3D imaging on it. So I got to grab a few more things from the shop and uh, when I get back, we'll get started. Let's get this party started here. So what we have to do, I'll show you here real quick. This is actually this box right here. It's a little storage area. This is where all of our wiring runs up to the dash. And basically everything runs up top here. We can't get to, you actually have to pull the ceiling out at the top of this thing in order to get your hands up to where the garments are up there. But we need to go through this hole right here. Cause this will lead us to the other side here, I'll show you. Come up to our dash. We walk around to the starboard side. I pulled out this uh, other storage compartment here, and it leads us right here. And you look underneath, right there, that open hole. And that's where we're going. So we got to run a cable from there to here because we're going to put the sounder module here, which I do not have. So we're just going to get ready to uh, put everything in. So our wiring is going to come through here. And I'm just going to tie it up here and wrap it up nicely. And then we go to the other side here. You can't see very well, but that hole right there is going to lead us down into the bilge. So yeah, continuing on the starboard side of the boat, coming into the bilge here. Here's our sea keeper. And above our fuel tank for a generator here, you see all these hoses going up into that hole. That's where that leads to. So we're going to have to run our transducer cable up into that hole. And from there, it's going to go backwards to the starboard side of the transom. Back here, see if I can wedge myself back here and see. Pretty tight back here. But I should be able to reach back here, somewhere up here. That lid right there in the middle. That lid right there should be somewhere where that transducer is going to come through. You see there's like metal plates and everything in the transom, so I can't drill through the transom. So we're going to have to come up the back of the transom and then through the basically the walkway in there get myself out of the hole here all right let's look at the back of the boat here sorry air conditioner running we're parked right next to the building here might be a little loud in the background so our transducer here like I just showed you in the hole is gonna go right here somewhere on the deck we'll figure that out in a second we're gonna just try to kind of go straight and see the closest spot we can put it here we want to make sure we're going to stay on our starboard side because on this side, the only thing you have is a transducer that's flat on the bottom. If you look at the port side, there is a big giant scoop there for your water. So we don't want to interfere and cause any cavitation on the hull here and mess up this transducer. So we're going to put it right here, close to the middle as possible. And here's a little paper that tells you. Don't hang it too low under the transom. You want to basically just skim in the, the water line. So I already have the bracket on here. We're gonna hang it up here and mark our spots. There we go. Let's drill those out real quick. Round off all right, just so we don't crack any gel coat sealer on it. Make sure they all bit really good. There we go. Alright, so our level is good. It looks like it's about perfect with the bottom of the boat here. We are going to lock these down here. Make sure this thing won't move up and down. It's a little loose still. Just want to make sure. We got to pin it here and walk our cable all the way up. So let me do that real quick and I'll show you. It's just basically drilling in a few more holders here. We have fiberglass on everything. 
So basically, I use these guys here, which are just these. You got different size clamps, put a stainless screw, a little silicone, do the same thing I just did here, walk it all the way up. Now the fun part, we gotta drill through the floor. All right, now let's jump to the back of the boat here. I open this cover up right here. I wanna see where we can drill, where we don't hit the transom here, because there's a spot where you can go too far, but it looks like basically anywhere in here we can do it. I wanna keep it as close to the back as possible so it doesn't obstruct anywhere you can walk back here, because it's basically a walking path. We have this guy right here. That's what we're gonna put on. A little clamshell action. And we need this big drill bit here, big hole saw. Let's find a good spot. So looking off the back here, I'm gonna go pretty straight with it, I guess. Somewhere right here. And then we're gonna drill right here somewhere. Feel underneath, there's nothing there. that is crazy took a little while to get through it all right let's see if this fits make sure we're good there and let's put our wire through because we're gonna have to go down there and catch it somewhere let's go find it I don't want to get that wet I'm gonna try some water or something that might be down there I can see it's a little wet down there all right back down in the hole here See if we can figure out where it's at. If I can even reach it. I think I can see it right there behind that hose. Oh, there it is. You can see it in the camera. Can't see it because the hose is right here or in my way. Let me see if I can reach in there and grab it. We got it. All right, good deal. That wasn't too easy to reach. It fell off of that hose when I tried to grab it and I had to reach even further. And that's sharp. That was stabbing me the whole time. So now, we're gonna run it behind all of our hoses here. Try to get it up into that hole. So I'm gonna put a pull wire. I got a, an extra cable we're gonna shove down there and see if I can grab it. That way we can just tie it to it, pull it back through. All right, let's get out of the hole. Next, like I say, we're gonna try to run a wire. There's a couple things we can't do. I'm gonna show you real quick. I got a chance to take a Spanish pause here because being in that hole is hot. So we're not gonna do anything with this because I thought I had a network cable too, but I don't. So let's go look at that real quick. So basically, in our hole here, I would have to run cable to our fuse panel, just like all these are, down our hole here. I also need to run a network cable, which, like I said in the beginning of the video, we'd have to put all the way up to the back of the Garmin's because they all have their network ports. And it comes through here. So I'm not gonna bother with this because I was gonna run the network and the power together. We still have to do that, so why run and waste time doing one when I need to do two anyways? And the box, which basically is about this size, that the transducer plugs into, we don't have that, like a lot of Garmin parts right now. They're on back order. And something just beeped at me, I don't know what. Anyway, so I basically have to uh, leave this alone. Put our. Alright, enough beeping. Basically, put our uh, box back in here. I'm gonna shut the power off because that's annoying. Because we're gonna leave this alone, like I say, because there's no reason to uh, do something twice. But that wire, or the network and the power, would essentially run under our floor right here to the other side, like I said but we're gonna mount our GSD-25. That's the sounder module for that transducer. And back down in here, they would end up running right there. But we gotta run right now to the other side here. So I'm gonna shove a cable up or down one or the other. Let's see if I can get to that spot right there. Looks like I might have to take this fridge out of my way to get to it. Right where I need to be. 
So I'd have to take both these out anyways. So we're gonna pull this out, or let me pull this out real quick, and we'll shove a cable down to get down there. But right here, on the forward side of this compartment, is where we're gonna mount that GST. That's why I said I needed power up here, the network cable, because then our transducer wire goes here, and then our network and power go that way, and then it basically, it should function just fine. So let me get this fridge out of here real quick. All right, so I got the fridge pulled out now. I put this back in. We've got better access now to where we need to go to our hole here, and we got a pull wire. If I can reach down in here, shove this down the hole, we got a good spot for that transducer end to come through. Looks like right there. Looks like a big open spot where I can push this. So hopefully I can reach this on the other side. Let's go see if we can grab it. Let's crawl back in the hole here. I spend half of my life. Well, I can see it. Let me put you down and see if I can reach it. Here we go. So now, we got our wiring run behind everything. Still gotta zip tie everything up. I'm gonna probably zip tie that up. And then come down with that stuff. Down all of our rigging here. And I ran this line underneath our water lines here because it's gonna go up that rigging. Basically back right up into the hole there. So, now we are going to tape this guy to here. And I'll show you a trick to that. So the easiest way I found over the years of doing this is electrical tape works the best. It seems to uh, hold up good and you can stretch it tight. Sometimes you gotta get heavy wire through small holes, stuff like that. So if you taped it just like this, you're gonna have pretty much a stopper. Anytime it hits a wall or something, it's gonna dead end, you'll never get it through. Especially if you're in a tight spot or something. So what I do is move it forward and bend it in half. That way when it pulls through, it's pulling from this end you can tape all of this so you have no ridges or anything and then that square end won't get hit by anything. You can also go a step further because you don't want to bend this too hard. You can tape it pretty tight but you don't want to crease this too much. You can take the end of a silicone tube oh, drop it. Silicone tube or anything you have an end of that's pointy. You could even make something with a piece of cardboard if you wanted to and cut that off obviously the ridge but tape it to it if you tape it to it, then you have another spot where at least it'll help guide it through a hole that might be tight or something. So, And you can also, which I don't like to do because it makes everything sticky because electrical tape ends up sticking with chemicals, is uh, spray silicone or WD-40 or any kind of lubricant on the wiring after you get it all taped up. And it'll help slide through rig tubes or, you know, sometimes you have really tight spaces like I'm saying that. It doesn't want to go through. Tape it with this, this, and spray some uh, you know, lubricant on it, and it should go through. If not, then you're gonna have to try a different route or try a different way, possibly, depending on what you're trying to do. So let's tape this off, and we'll get it through our hole. This shouldn't have no issue going through. We've got a big wide open gap up there, so. Let me finish this real quick. I don't even gonna use that. I hope that helps. I know that pulling, uh, pulling wires can be frustrating sometimes. I fought them for 20 years now. This doesn't have to be anything special because, like I say, we got a big hole. Just don't want it to fall off the cable and have to do it all over again. Oh, and here's another thing. Put yourself a tail on it so you can unwrap it instead of having to try to find the end. You just bend that piece in half. You'll be able to know where you stopped. Makes it a little easier. All right, let's go to the other side and see if we can get this bastard through there. All right, from one hole to the other. Go inside here. Oh, look at that. It's a really high tide right now. I wonder where the moon's at. All right, let me set the camera down in here. See if I can get my arm in here again. I hope she comes through the first time easily. Like I said, I don't think we'll have a problem. We can feel them there. I want to get it to break off of there. 
I might have to go to the other side and push it up. Let's see if I can get my other hand in there better. I can feel the lines. It's gonna be tough to get it through the hole this way. I'm gonna leave the camera on and I'm gonna go push it through. I wonder if it'll come through. Let's see if I can get it to go. Haha, <laughs> I got it to come through there. I'm glad it was not an easy spot to get to. So we just got to pull out our extra here so we can wrap it up. And then we're going to tie up our, all our wiring down there tight. Basically just leave all this stuff up in here. So we get the parts, we can finish the job. I'm glad I reached up here because I was a little skeptical. 30 feet is a lot, but this is a 45 foot boat. So let's go back downstairs real quick. All right, I don't know why I said downstairs. I mean, back in the hole. I said back in the hole too many times here. So let me get my zip ties here. I'm going to tie it up. I'll show you the end result here. That's about all I can do. All right, so after squeezing myself back out of this spot right here, our wire is run. You can see the one single cable there. It's tied up all the way along. Can't really see it because I hit it under the battery cables. It goes over here and it sneaks up over the wall and it's tied up. I come over here and I've tied the extra up, stuck behind here. We're just gonna leave it because we gotta come back in this hole to install the sounder module. But I've taped up the end into a bag so it don't get wet. So we gotta put our uh, fridge back in here. Basically just put all the stuff back in the hole here. And then this boat can go home for the weekend. And hopefully I can go over the weekend here and get all my stuff off the boat, put the fridge back, and call it a day here. So, as always, I appreciate everybody watching, and I will see you next time. Later. What's behind door number two? That is a Chevy direct-injected small block. See a direct injection here in the heads. There's a high-pressure fuel pump right here the fuel lines. This one lost oil pressure. I think the oil pump failed, the gears broke or something. I'm not exactly sure. They replaced the block, took all the components off. You can see underneath the oil pump is right at the front of the motor there.